Today on Two Guys in a Ride, we're going to review the 2021 Land Rover Defender. This is the 110 SE. I'll tell you about the horsepower, cargo, dimensions, and safety. And I'll tell you about the interior, the controls, and all the technology. But before we get started, take a minute, click that subscribe button down below. And hit that bell notification so you never miss a video. Yep, that's a wrap. Oh no, wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> what do you say, oh, Nate? No. <laughs> Let's, Let's go, go for a ride. ride. Today we're working with our friends at Maury's Jaguar Land Rover of Richfield. For 2021, the Land Rover Defender is available in seven trim levels. There's the base that starts at 50,500, the S starts at 53,800, the X Dynamic S, 59,150, the SE, 62,700, the X Dynamic SE, 65,500, the X Dynamic HSE, 71,600, and the X at $83,000. Of course, there's also the two-door 90 series and this one, which is the four-door 110 series. This is the 2021 Land Rover Defender 110 SE, and it's presented here in Pangea Green Metallic, and it has an Acorn Lunar leather interior and an MSRP of $72,105. Now it is powered by a three liter double overhead cam, direct injected intercooled turbo gas and electric inline six cylinder engine with a lithium ion traction battery that totally produces 395 horsepower and 406 pound foot of torque. It's driven by an automatic ZF transmission with driver selectable mode and sequential shift and this particular version does have full-time four-wheel drive. Now, I wanna take a minute to explain to you the difference between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. You see those used all over the place. They're not the same. With an all-wheel drive system, power comes from the engine and goes to a center differential. The center differential then sends power to both axles most of the time they have an additional clutch pack that can vary the amount of power sent to each axle, front or rear. On a full-time four-wheel drive system, power comes from the engine and goes to a selectable transfer case, then to the rear differential. The engine will share power equally through the transfer case to both front and rear axles. Four-wheel drive systems are also equipped with a low gear range, uh, is why you know, the hardcore off-roaders and four-wheelers out there uh, will use a four-wheel drive system when they're going off-road. Uh, just makes it uh, more easy to control and more power to the wheels. So, now you know. Okay, out front this does have the auto on-off projector, high beam, low beams, and they are the automatic leveling headlights and they have the delay off and daytime running lights as well. I love the simple horizontal one bar grill with a Land Rover badge and the Defender name spelled out right across that big flat hood. Looks really cool. I like that. <laughs> Most people get to see it in the rear view mirror. You get to see it as you walk up to your vehicle. Also, this does have the body colored front bumper with the metal look uh, lower rub, uh, rub strip fascia and it has the accent uh, of the black bumper insert. There are front LED fog lights and you see the parking sensors as well as I really do like that mesh styling on that lower metal look fascia. It's, it's a nice blend of styles there. Up top, there is, like I said, that chiseled flat hood and it has those tread pad inserts paying tribute to previous Defender models and to help you face the world, there are speed sensitive, rain detecting, variable intermittent wipers, and it has a solar attenuating windshield that filters sunlight passing through a special laminated layer. Also, that windshield and washer nozzles are heated as well. Let's take a look around the side. Okay, these are regenerative four wheel disc brakes with four wheel ABS, and it has 14.3 front and 13.8 rear vented brake rotors 
and it also has Brembo calipers. The wheels are 20 by 8.8 .8 aluminum wheels with the gloss silver finish and they're wrapped in 255-60 VR20 all season tires. Now, this is an electronic active differential and it has 3.55 axle ratios front and rear. It has four wheel independent suspension with short long arm front and multi-link rear suspension. It also does have an automatic with driver's control adaptive suspension that raises or lowers the height of the vehicle based on the number uh, of conditions and driver selections. Now, I really do like these black wheel arches and you see the lower body uh, side cladding as well. And it does have these nice gloss black trimmed capped power heated side mirrors with driver auto dimming and they are power folding and it does have perimeter approach lighting. You see it also does have the body color door handles with the uh, push button sensor lock unlock touch and there are black uh, belt line and window tree mo trim moldings and I really do like the blacked out B, C, D pillars and that second row blacked out glass as well as the third row glass really makes this stand out. Now, up top you can see the really cool safari windows and there are black roof rails and a panoramic sunroof. Let's take a walk around the back. Okay, and you can see the full-size spare tire with the full-size matching aluminum wheel back here as well. Uh, pretty sure aftermarket, maybe even through Land Rover, you can get a cover for that if you were looking for that. Uh, up top is the LED high mount uh, brake light, and you see up there it does have that shark fin antenna. Now, this is a fixed rear window with defroster and intermittent wiper with washer, and the door does open from the driver's side over toward the curbside in America, which would be the passenger side. Again, I really do like this blacked out D-pillar, and I like uh, how just the overall crisp cut line here and how flat this whole rear end is and just how the LED lights blend nicely and seamlessly into this whole black B-pillar as it comes down toward the bumper there. You also see the nice body colored uh, grab handle for the rear hatch and just below that is the Defender name in nice block letters. Now the rear step bumper is body colored with metal look rub strip fascia accent and it does have the black bumper insert as well. And you see the reflectors and rear parking sensors too. And down below that, tucked up underneath is are the uh, dual tailpipes. Now this Defender also has trailer stability assist that automatically detects when a sway is developing on a correctly attached trailer. When active, TSA gradually reduces the vehicle speed to help regain control of that trailer. Let's take a look at the cargo area. Second row seats are split folding 40, 20, 40, and the third row seats are manual folding and they're 50, 50. Max cargo volume behind the front row is 78.8 cubic feet. Max cargo volume behind the second row is 34 cubic feet. And max cargo volume behind the third row is 10.7 cubic feet. Cargo floor length to the front row to the back seal is 70.4 inches. Cargo floor length from the second row to the back seal is 35.4 inches. Cargo floor length from the third row to the back seal is eight and a half inches. Cargo width at the belt line is 38 and a half inches. Cargo width at the wheelhouses is 45.7 inches. Cargo opening height from the base sill to the roof mount there, 35.6 inches, and liftover height at its lowest uh, setting with its adjustable suspension is 33 inches. So what are some of the safety systems on this 2021 Land Rover Defender 110 SE? Well, there is emergency braking, blind spot assist, 3D surround cameras, clear exit monitor, driver condition monitor, lane keep assist, 360 parking aid, rear traffic monitor, traffic sign recognition and adaptive speed limiter, trailer stability assist, as I mentioned just a minute ago, and it has weighed sensing and much more. So some of the options that are available on this Defender. Well, you can get the off-road pack, the cold climate pack, the towing pack, 
Advanced Off-Road Capability Pack, Comfort and Convenience Pack, Driver Assisted Technologies that expands what already comes basically on the vehicle, um, and either a uh, premium or a basic interior protection and storage packs. Let's talk next about the dimensions. Okay, front track is 67 inches, rear track 66.9 inches, has a max width of 82.9 inches, overall length 197.6, height is 77.4, wheelbase 118.9, minimum ground clearance 8.6 inches with a maximum ground clearance of 11 and a half inches. Now, for comparison, the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon has 10.8 inches of max ground clearance. So, approach angle, 37.5 degrees. Departure angle, 40 degrees. And the breakover angle is 28 degrees. Maximum wading depth, how much water can you tread? 35.4 inches. Again, for comparison, the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon can only wade through 30 inches of water. Now, one thing to mention with that wade sensing feature, it cannot be enabled if the all-terrain progress control system is currently enabled. And that wade sensing uh, operation will suspend itself if the vehicle speed exceeds six miles per hour or if the slope on which the vehicle is traveling exceeds 10 degrees. Also, that wade sensing system will actually cancel itself if the vehicle speed exceeds 19 miles per hour for 30 seconds. So, not bad. It really thinks for you and, and, and knows what's going on. Also, after you're done playing in the puddles and as a safety feature, the wade mode will drag the brakes and rotors, uh, the pads and rotors, to dry off the brakes so you're back up to optimum stopping power in no time. So back to weights and dimensions. Weight is 5,035 pounds. Uh, the front, uh, the roof weight capacity with the Expedition roof is 291 pounds. Maximum towing, 8,201 pounds. Turning circle, 42.1 feet. And it has a fuel capacity of 23.8 gallons. So let's talk about safety. Well, neither IIHS or NHTSA have yet to rate this vehicle. So it's in queue, I'm sure, but it just hasn't been rated yet. Now performance, zero to 60, 5.8 seconds, top speed, 119 miles per hour, and braking 60 to zero is 127 feet. What about its appearance? Well, I gotta tell you, I think it's a fantastic modern interpretation of that classic Land Rover look. And with those lines and that silhouette, I think it's instantly recognizable as a Defender the world over. Now, dependability. Well, it does come with a basic warranty of four years, 50,000 miles, a powertrain warranty of four years, 50,000 miles, and a corrosion perforation warranty of six years with unlimited miles. And finally then, economy. 17 city, 22 highway, and 19 combined. So, yeah. Not bad, not bad at all. Now let's take a look inside, but before we do, take a moment, check out my notes in the description below, and give us a like, leave a comment, and please click on that subscribe button. So I know Nathan's chomping at the bit to get in here to show you this, and it's a beautiful interior and a beautiful ride. So what do you say, Nate? Take it away. And stepping on the inside, you I gotta love this, this look here with the, the bolts still sticking out of the door. Uh, this looks really good. Uh, the door also has a good heft to it when you uh, when you close it or open it. This is a good solid feeling. Uh, you do have some uh, deep storage right back in here, and it's got a non uh, a non slip surface right in here. And you do have two of your eleven speakers of your Meridian sound system. You have your unlock and lock buttons here, and then up on uh, the top here, of course, you got your, your window lock out here, and you've got your uh, auto up and down, all four windows. You got your left, right mirror controls, and then you have uh, three person memory setting, and then I love this button. Uh, this is actually not a button, it's just a light, but when you uh, open the door, if it senses anything 
that would be uh, in danger of maybe hitting the door when it opens, it lights up uh, in uh, orange or red. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but otherwise it's just white and it's on all four doors. And I think that's just a really neat uh, safety system. All right, stepping on back here, take a look at the seats. Both driver and passenger seat are the same. They are 12 way power. So you got a um, four position lumbar there and then you have got uh, tilt and then forward slide and then you can raise a lower or just uh, the whole seat or just the front I absolutely love it when they put extra storage in and this is kind of a unique one I, I love again the look with the bolt sticking out uh, But not only do you have access there, but you also have access right through the top uh, And then there are a couple of ports. So we'll get to those later Coming down here, there's a you've got your, your standard foot pedals. You got your a nice big left foot rest and then you have your hood opener right here. And then what I like about it is, if you notice on the door, there's this large uh, plastic knob that sticks out. And when the door is closed, it actually sits right on top of this. So you can't uh, inadvertently bend down and open up your, your, uh, your hood. Now, coming up from there, you've got your dashboard brightness and dimness controls right here. And you've got your electronic parking brake right here. And then coming up here, I love this. Um, it's, it actually functions, as, it's a pass through, but it functions as a grab, another grab handle. In addition to the one that's in the ceiling, of course, the passenger side is the same way. The steering wheel is also a tilt and telescope. And that knob, instead of being over here on the left, where we're kind of used to seeing it, is actually is actually over here on the right hand side and it does have an auto tilt feature so that uh, when you uh, shut off the car and open the door the the steering wheel automatically goes up and goes in to make it easier to exit let's talk a moment about the dimensions in the front in the front there is 40.6 inches of headroom 39.1 inches of legroom and 60.8 inches of shoulder room now let's step in and start it up all right it is a push start You, you'll notice, oh, I, I just, I love that digital screen. Now, it's a 12.3 inch digital screen and it is uh, configurable. Uh, for instance, you can throw your navigation across the screen. So uh, we'll go through the driver's information screen and the infotainment system in a separate video. Uh, but it's very crisp graphics. Very, very nice. Um, and uh, over here on the steering wheel, uh, this side here controls your media and the, your driver's information screen. And then you have voice command and your phone. Uh, it'll also do some things with media, for instance, the volume and then uh, going back and forth uh, between stations and stuff. But I'll show you more of that later. This side over here is basically all your cruise control. Uh, this does have adaptive cruise control and your heated steering wheel button. Now, Coming over uh, to the center here by the navigation screen, before we talk about that, I absolutely love this, this uh, harken back to the older Land Rovers where we have this nice open area here. And it's all non-skid uh, rubberized surface on the bottom. And, it, and it, it is very nice. It actually goes behind the infotainment system. Now, the infotainment system itself is a 10-inch screen and it has, uh, it's 400 watts, it has 11 speakers, including a subwoofer, and it's the Meridian's uh, premium sound system. There is uh, an upgrade you can get to, uh, I believe it's about 840 watt sound system. Um, it has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, uh, of course, voice command, and it has uh, AM and FM radio, along with HD radio and Sirius XM, and then, of course, the uh, In Control app that Land Rover uses. Um, and it's a very quick response. The biggest thing to say about this is it's, it's run off of uh, two, two uh, uh, Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon processors. So one is dedicated to um, uh, your infotainment stuff along with an eSIM card. And then the other one is dedicated to um, keeping you connected to doing downloads and updates. So whatever you do, it's a seamless connection. Now, 
Uh, coming back down a little bit down here, we have a plethora of controls that these two do multiple things. Uh, but basically, you, uh, this is your climate control and some of your suspension. And uh, this one is your hill descent and your auto start stop off and then your defrosters. This does have a heated front windshield. Uh, and that's what this button's for. That's, of course, max defrost. That's your rear defroster. This will change your modes. And this is recirculatory. And then, of course, these are your dials. It is a tri-zone auto climate control system. And we will go over more of those details of what's all in here and how to use it in our how-to video. Now, just below that, we have a unique center console. When I say unique, I mean I can stick my arm all the way through from the top. We've seen vehicles that have you know, storage underneath. That's always so nice. But trying to reach underneath there to grab something, you can only get about halfway across. Land Rover has made this so you can reach right in and get everything. In fact, where you see this piece right here, there is a whole other section in the bottom underneath this. So it stretches back quite a ways. Uh, now, right as it comes below the shifter here, you do have a USB-C and a USB-A along with a 12-volt outlet. This uh, rubberized storage tray can be pulled up to reveal your cup holders. And they've got a nice pass through there. They got little rubber bumps in there to help grip uh, fairly large sized cups. So your wireless phone charger is right down here. Okay? But you can, you can see it better if I lift this up. Okay? So I have a large size smartphone um, and, and I had to push a little bit to get it in there, but it is charging. So it, it definitely will accommodate larger size cell phones. The uh, storage area in the back here is quite deep, not long. It's got to be a good uh, almost, almost you know eight inches deep there. Um, and you can also get this as a refrigerator. All right, so here's another unique thing. Notice how far back the lid goes, the cover. Um, that, that goes a long ways. You also notice the, 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 the sort of the little rubber seal that goes around there that's kind of interesting. So, I mean, you can have this out and have this as a little holding tray, perhaps for your beverages that you had sitting in, in your cool, if you had a refrigerator one, or for anything. That's just kind of unique. All right, moving over here, the glove compartment is lockable and it is lit. So coming up here, we do have a uh, auto dimming rear view mirror, but it's also digital. You just flip the day night switch. Um, and then uh, you've got some buttons up here that can adjust you know, the angle, the tilt, the brightness, and that kind of stuff. And we'll again cover that a little bit more when we get to the how-to video. Coming back up here, you do have right here, you have your two emergency buttons. You have uh, your power button for sliding the uh, sunroof and then your power shade button. Back here, you have, of course, your sunglass or glasses holder. Okay, so the visors on both sides are, uh, open this up here, both of them are lit, and of course they are telescope. Uh, you do have two grab handles uh, on each side, so you got this one here, and then you've got the one that's built right into the dashboard. On the top of the dashboard, you do have your vent controls right here, and then you have your hazard. All right, let's step into the second row. In the second row, there is 40.4 inches of headroom, 39.1 inches of legroom, and 59.2 inches of shoulder room. Stepping into the second row, uh, you have you know the, the same design as the, the, the front row here. You've got a little bit less storage down here. It's basically would be a bottle holder. You've got two more of your speakers. You've got your, uh, your power window switches right behind this handle. But I do absolutely love this look right here. Now, you do have that same sensor that you had on the driver's door that I showed you uh, built in. It's actually on all four doors. Yeah. The seats themselves are a 40, 40, 20 split. And uh, to, to do that, to, to fold them down, there are two levers. Uh, one is right on the uh, bottom of the seat here on the side. And if you just pull that one up, it'll collapse right down. Okay? Then there is, a, of course, a manual bar on the front here to slide the seat. Okay? If, you're, uh, if, you're trying, if you're in the third row trying to get out, there's another uh, pull switch that's just on the top. And that just tilts the back of the seat forward a little bit. You know, the headrests are all manually adjustable. Uh, and uh, you notice the, the, the rubberized floor mats. It's just all the way. I mean, there's no carpet in here, uh, which makes it extremely easy to clean. All right, let's step in. 
Okay, so on the back of each of the seats, there is a 5 volt uh, USB A plug in, uh, which makes it really convenient because it's right by the passenger. I've never seen that before. Now, in addition to that, you do have two USB C's down here in the center, and you each have a 12 volt outlet. All right, this, so this is the other part of the tri zone climate control. You have, of course, temperature for each side. You have a sync button here, um, and you have it on an auto function. You have a fan speed, and then you have, uh, if you want it coming out the, the vents here in the middle, or if you want coming out the floor. Now, each of the seats has a mat pocket built right into it, and then you do have an armrest and cup holder uh, right in the middle and again it's got those little rubberized grips on the side to help hold the cup firmly and it's a decent sized cup holder it's also nicely elevated so it matches the door on your other side uh, so it's very comfortable now because you have that lever that's on the side that i showed you earlier you can tilt the seat uh, this is as far back as it goes but it's always more comfortable when you can tilt and then of course like i showed you you can of course slide the seat uh, backwards and forwards um, now, I, I got to mention one thing, and that is the Safari windows. Uh, I, I absolutely love these, and they do let some nice light in um, on both, you know, the second row and the third row. It just helps to brighten up the vehicle a little bit, and I absolutely love the looks of it. All right, time to step into the third row. The dimensions in the third row are as follows. There is 7.5 inches of legroom, and the seats are 36 inches wide across both seats. Okay, so to get into the third row, you just pull this switch. It's going to tilt the seat and pull it forward. So, very tight fit. Now, it would help if I didn't have the headrest sitting down, so give me a second. Okay, that's a, that's a little better, but this is small, right? You, you would only want to use this for, for small kids. But you do at least have that possibility to have that third row. Now, that being said, for such a small third row, uh, Land Rover has equipped it really nicely. Now, you have got rubberized, built-in, heavy-duty cup holders with a mug slot, so you can have a coffee mug back here. I would not advise that. I don't think anyone old enough to ride back here would be half coffee, but you also have 12-volt uh, outlets on both sides. And you have an air vent in the floor, but you also have an air vent on the side, okay? And then back here, as part of the tri-zone, although you have no temperature control, you can control your fan speed, which is a nice touch, I gotta admit. I really like it. So, definitely meant for, for, uh, for small kids, uh, but at least you have the possibility. I am anxious to get out and take it for a ride, and that's coming up next. Boy, 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 oh boy. I'll tell you, you know, this thing looks rugged, but it doesn't drive rugged. It drives very luxurious. It's amazing how soft and cosseted you feel sitting in this vehicle. Nice, soft touch materials everywhere. It's just absolutely beautiful in here. Um, you know, interior sound and quietness. It's a big open box, but it is extremely quiet in here. And that to me is what's so interesting here. Um, is that they've done an excellent job with the sound editing. It's just, wow, it's something else, I'll tell you. Acceleration, well, I'm gonna try that right now. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> okay, this will get you merged onto a highway pretty darn quickly. As far as fit and finish, you know, I kind of touched on that a second ago by talking about how uh, quiet and costed you are in here. Everything, nice, soft touch materials everywhere. Uh, I love, love the overall openness and the design of this vehicle. And I can see where this is going to be a huge hit for Land Rover. So, coming up next, we'll hear what Nathan has to say about it. And I guarantee you, yeah, he's going to love it. Stay tuned. All right, my turn. Hoo -hoo. I have not ridden it in a Land Rover since I was in elementary school. Wow. Um, now, in terms of getting in and out of the vehicle, um, you'll see we'll overlay a video here, but getting in and out of the front is easy. There's double grab handles there to use. And then there's also, um, you know, uh, it's also easy to get 
in and out of the rear, the second row seat. Easy to park and navigate, yes. It's got the 360 camera system on there. And not only that, but you can see your vehicle as if you're on the outside looking back at it from uh, just about any angle. It's just really, really nice. Comfortable ride. Well, like I said, it's come a long ways since the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, this is really quiet. It's got a very, very comfortable ride to it. I mean, this is absorbing all the little strips in the road. And, uh, wow. But overall, just, man, I, I love, I love how they've done the gauges. I just absolutely love it. So overall, just a beautiful vehicle. Thanks for watching. Well, that's our review of the 2021 Land Rover Defender 110 SE and we appreciate you spending some time with us. Make please. sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and please click on that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.